broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, good afternoon, traders. Okay, welcome to the uh, webinar here. This is uh, for uh, trading U.S. equities uh, and the data visualization uh, with DX feed book map. Okay, and um, uh, what uh, the goal here uh, of this uh, of this webinar is to show a competitive advantage that you can receive right now uh, using DX feed book map. And um, uh, we'll get into it uh, in just a minute here. Uh, let's just go through the risk disclaimer, trading equities, futures. Oh, hold on just a moment. <clears throat> I'm sorry, just a moment here. Let me just uh, turn something off so we don't get interrupted again. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, risk disclaimer, trading equities futures um, uh, involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Bruce Pringle. I'm a trader of 10 years in a variety of markets. Order flow specialist here at Bookmap. Uh, lead the trading education and expertise in order flow and market microstructure. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter uh, at bookmap underscore pro. Uh, you can also subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, just look up bookmap uh, and subscribe. And then uh, you can always reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. All right. So starting off this webinar here with um, get a, com a competitive advantage right now, that's a, that's a pretty bold statement. Uh, and... Um, uh, but uh, we're going to back it up, and I'm going to show you uh, how that is possible with data visualization and uh, getting superior data uh, using DX Feed Book Map. And how we're going to do this uh, as well, we're going to uh, look at uh, uh, and see all market liquidity uh, and full depth of market. Uh, we're going to read the order flow in the micro and macro structures. Uh, we're going to read the algos and be able to see the larger players. I'm going to show you some examples from bookmap traders, and we're going to look at some of the live market analysis as well. All right. Well, I'm going to start off here with a chart of Apple, uh, and uh, this was back on March 22nd. And for those of you who are new here, you're looking at something that might be foreign to you. Well, by the end of the webinar, uh, we're going to review uh, this chart here, uh, and we're going to go through and uh, uh, analyze and be able to see some of the advantages that we're uh, uh, looking at here in this chart. Uh, so based on this webinar, you should be able to go back and uh, start to uh, see and understand what you're looking at and where there's distinct advantages. Okay, so a little overview though uh, of DX Feed Bookmap. So what is it? Uh, well, uh, it's, it's a, a trading platform uh, and uh, DX Feed uh, is the uh, data provider uh, with Bookmap. Uh, and um, uh, you will be able to uh, connect your DX feed also and trade uh, into an interactive brokers traders uh, workstation uh, if, if you want to uh, uh, trade from uh, DX feed bookmap. Uh, DX feed bookmap is a unique visualization software. Uh, again, the DX feed is what connects us to the U.S. equities uh, and allows for uh, futures and uh, digital, digital currency connections as well. Okay, so. Uh, the DX feed book map, you can connect to uh, a variety of markets all at the same time. It's, it's uh, uh, for U.S. equities, for futures, and for digital currencies. All right, we're going to start off a poll here because we're going to be talking about order flow. Uh, so let's uh, uh, just uh, get some, uh, some insight here uh, into the order flow. And um, you should be able to see the screen there if you can uh, just uh, uh, provide an answer of what is order flow. Okay. Is it, are you looking at the traded volume or is it, uh, is it something else? Is it uh, uh, the, just the order book information or is it both? Because okay. uh, traditionally order flow is uh, something different uh, than uh, uh, truly what it is. 
and uh, there's reasons for that. Okay, looks like uh, getting there. A few more, if you can just uh, uh, provide your answers here, and uh, we'll go over some of the um, some of the results here. Getting some pretty interesting results. All right, just a, a few more if we can just uh, answer here. Uh, and I think we'll be good to go. All right. All right, well let's uh, let's go through it then. Okay, so uh, what is order flow? Uh is it the the traded volume, uh you know, both buying and selling? Or are we looking at uh, uh, the, the resting orders, uh, the limit orders that uh, are in the depth of market, or is it a combination of both? Okay. Well, the, the answer is it's, it's a combo, uh, and um, uh, there, you know looks like uh, uh, about uh, a third of you uh, thought it was the uh, traded volume, uh, and just a, a few thought it was just the resting orders, and uh, about half said uh, uh, it's both. Okay. Now um, traditionally. Uh, it is known as the traded volume uh, and um, uh, the, just the transactions that occurred in the markets. And why is that? It was because that was the only data that was available. Uh, when you're reading the tape uh, or reading the order flow, you're looking at the transactions. You're not, you're not able to look at anything else. Uh, that, that data wasn't available. But to look at the entire order flow, uh, we want to understand not only to the transactions, but we want to understand the auction where they lined up to bid and offer. Uh, and um, not until recently uh, has this really been available to us uh, to be able to understand that. Uh, now, in the early 90s, it was available uh, through your depth of market, your dome. Uh, however, the problem is with that dome uh, is that uh, uh, is fleeting data. Uh, it's only there for a bit. Uh, when the numbers change in the dome, the data is gone. Right? And so uh, this is the advantage that you're going to get using Bookmap uh, because we can record and display uh, that auction historically, uh, which allows you a, a lot of different advantages. So anyway, let's uh, let's move on here. We'll close up the poll, and we'll get back to the screen. And let's get back to our presentation here. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about the market data. Okay. So, um, uh, and and this is what I mean uh, talking about the traditional charts uh, and and traditionally what was order flow. Okay, it's the executed volume, uh, and traditional charts show that pretty well. Uh, now they also show uh, periods of that data, and that's aggregated data uh, like a candlestick or a bar chart. Or, or maybe it's a point and figure chart from the old days. Whatever it is, these are aggregated periods uh, of time uh, or volume uh, or some derivative of it. Uh, and um, uh, that's, that's a disadvantage uh, because uh, when you're looking at the, the aggregated period, well, there's all sorts of data that is now closed off to you. Uh, you're not able to see within a candlestick, for example, uh, because uh, you're only looking at four data points open, high, low, and close of that period. Uh, and that's, uh, that's really the, uh, the problem there. Uh, and a lot of the traditional charts try to make up maybe for some of those uh, disadvantages through indicators. Uh, and uh, there's a, a lot of problems with the indicators too because uh, they're, first off, they're looking at uh, opaque data uh, and they're always a derivative of time, price, and volume. Uh, and that is a, a disadvantage. A lot of times these indicators, because of some sort of mathematical computation that they must uh, uh, go through, uh, they lag. Uh, they're not giving you um, a, a prediction or uh, an area where we think price is going to go to. Uh, so 
uh, all sorts of disadvantages uh, in those traditional charts. Uh, and uh, it's really about 10% of the data. It's actually less than that. Uh, but um, uh, the data in Bookmap, uh, what you're going to get is 100% of the data out, out there. You're going to look at the executed volume, uh, just like the other charts. But you're going to be looking at non-aggregated data. Okay, Every single data point or event in the market is recorded in Bookmap. Uh, and then you're going to get full depth of market. Okay, And what do I mean by that? Um, well, it, it's... Um, we're going to show some really good examples of it, but what it is uh, is there's no limit to the depth. Okay, it's not just uh, 10 wide on the uh, bid or offer; uh, it is full depth. Okay, so uh, several dollars away, all those areas in the book are live. Okay, and that allows you to not only understand the current situation with price uh, and the auction, but also the historical. Okay, so looking over here to the right to this pyramid, uh, we can see these uh, uh, stratas here in this foundation. Everything in the foundation uh, that we uh, draw our conclusion from is based on the data. So we want as much data as we can get that gives us information. Okay, from that information that we are going to draw from the data leads to knowledge, our knowledge base. Okay, and uh, we're starting to put to the pieces together and starting to see patterns, starting to understand what's going on in an auction. Uh, and then from that, uh, ultimately we get to the top of the pyramid in wisdom and being able to uh, uh, foresee uh, uh, these patterns uh, play out in the future. Okay, And uh, this is a process actually we go through in the live webinars uh, every day. Uh, anyway, let's uh, move on to the next slide. So the data makes the difference here. Okay, without good data, everything else is going to be wrong. Garbage in, garbage out uh, is the uh, the key phrase uh, uh, we're used to hearing. Okay, so with DX Feed Bookmap, what this is going through uh, is it, it's uh, it's offering uh, all U.S. equities, uh, is offering that full depth of market. Okay, very low latency. There's servers all around the globe, uh, and um, it's a consolidated uh, view. Uh, choices that you have here. You can get NASDAQ total view and last sale, or you can get BATS, or you can get both. Okay, and I'm going to go through that um, at the end of the webinar here so uh, we can go through some of the pricing and um, uh, availability on the, on the different uh, choices you have here. All right, let's take a step back and take a look at a regular dome that I alluded to earlier. Allows you to see the auction. This is great. Okay, so here in this dome, uh, we're looking at um, uh, the bid over here on this side. This is Green Mountain Coffee Roasters, uh, an image off the internet. And then uh, on the right side here, uh, we have the, um, uh, the the ask, as you can see. Okay, and you know these are traders lined up here, uh, providing liquidity in the book uh, at these price levels. Okay, this is good. It allows you to understand the auction, uh, the current auction and what's going on. Uh, and uh, it allows you to um, start to optimize your your, your trade uh, management and your entries and exits. You know, you can see the larger players, where they are in the book uh, very precisely. Uh, and uh, this is what the pros are using. Okay, This is your level two data that, uh, you know, came out in the 90s. Okay, so uh, comparing that to book map. Uh, well, let's just go to the top of the book. Okay, best bid and offer. Well, this is what it looks like over here in your dome. Uh, for stocks, uh, this is what it looks like in Bookmap. Okay, so uh, it it mimics a a, a, a vertical dome here, uh, and you can see the uh, this is your best bid and offer here. Uh, you can see the uh, price ladder is here, and then we have our uh, in the dome this COB column, which stands for current order book. Uh, we see the depth on the uh, offer here, Okay, these are contracts, traders lined up to trade at these levels here on the offer. And then down below here uh, is the, uh, uh, on the bid. Okay, traders lined up to trade at these areas down here. Okay, now, uh, we're not looking at Green Mountain uh, Coffee Roasters, we're looking at Apple. Okay, so they're not going to all line up nicely here. But uh, anyway, it just illustrates the point here, uh, comparing the dome and understanding what it looks like in book map. And now let's go over and look at just the uh, the bid side and the depth of market on the bid. Well, here it is in your dome, okay, and then here it is in book map, okay. And now now on the offer, okay, very very simple here. 
uh, you know, these, these are the closest to the market here, okay? Closest to the market over here. And as you go further away in price, uh, it, you see the liquidity here offered. Uh, and then again here, as you uh, are close to the market here, and then the further away you go, uh, 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 with the price ladder, uh, you can see uh, the liquidity at these specific price levels. Now, the disadvantages of this dome, uh, I alluded to and said that there's no historical view. Well, that's true. These numbers change really quickly. This is a static image here, uh, but um, they're always providing liquidity uh, and pulling liquidity. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite tedious to read that and start to understand, well, wait a minute, where did they go? And wh where did they pull to? Uh, how much did they pull? How long were they there? Uh, all of these questions, uh, it's a lot going on and it's very difficult to read just by looking at these changing numeric values. So there's no historical view of it. That's a disadvantage. Okay. You're not able to read the uh, the algos. Uh, you, you know, uh, it, it was an algo or was it a real player that was adding or pulling? Well, we're going to show in bookmap how you can very easily read algorithmic behavior. Uh, and then there's no context here to microstructure nor macrostructure. You're only getting this current myopic view of the market uh, for this very moment. Okay. And uh, advantages using bookmap. Uh, is the quick graphical representation because what we do is we take these areas of liquidity here, let's say uh, here on the offer, and turn it into a graphical representation. Okay, so uh, the heat map here is how we do it. So everything to the right of this vertical white line is the current market. Here's your current best bid and offer. This number is the last traded volume. This is your heat map. We're looking at Apple. Okay, and uh, here's your depth here uh, on the uh, on the offer up above, and your depth on the bid down below. Okay, so um, uh, very very simple, uh, consolidated view here. You see all of the liquidity at this one price level. Okay, it's not broken into multiple market makers, uh, and um, it, that's the consolidation, uh, and uh, so you get all of it uh, at once. Uh, and be able to see uh, exactly the liquidity there at those areas, okay? And then it's transferred into a heat map. So if uh, it's very high liquidity, as you can see here, uh, some of the areas of higher liquidity, okay, 3,600, 2,200. Well, uh, if it's orange or red, dark red, it's high liquidity. Uh, and then if it goes, it goes down to orange, then yellow, then white, then blue, and then black, okay? Black being the lowest liquidity. Now, the highest liquidity stands like, out like a sore thumb here. Uh, we have over 31,000 contracts up here at 186.50. Okay, so that's what the heat map allows you to do is understand the liquidity graphically, very quickly, very easily, without the tedium of these numeric values. Okay, now uh, you, start, you can start to understand, though, some of the context of this liquidity and look at market microstructure, okay? Because uh, we record the data here. Uh, the heat map uh, is recorded and projected onto the chart. Okay, so here they are. Uh, you, you can look at these uh, very specific price levels and note these striations up here, okay? So it went from orange to yellow, back to white, uh, et cetera. This is the adding and pulling of liquidity and it's recorded here. So now we can start to judge uh, these traders are providing this liquidity and how interested they are actually to sell at some of these levels, especially when price comes up to them. Uh, we can start to identify uh, precisely uh, if they traded or if they pulled. Uh, and uh, anyway, I've got several examples to go through. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at, um, uh, this is the kind of current snapshot of Apple. Uh, let's take a look here at uh, some of the other elements here and then uh, talk about some of the microstructure as well, okay? Because uh, the liquidity heat map is just one element on the book map chart. There's two other elements here, uh, and uh, that's really it. It's, it's quite simple market data, uh, and it's a, a very ob objective view of this marketplace, okay? Because uh, all we're showing is historical best bid and offer, okay? That is uh, recorded on the chart, okay? The red line is the best offer, the green line is the best bid, okay? 
And then we're looking at the volume that traded, the transactions that actually took place on that historical best bid and offer. Okay, so this red bubble here, that's an aggressive seller. Okay, right into high liquidity here too. Uh, and uh, the green bubble over here, well, that's an aggressive buyer. Okay, they took liquidity off of the best offer. They hit the market buy button. Okay, they didn't provide, they didn't wait uh, and uh, provide liquidity in the book. Okay, and then uh, again, here's our, our best bid and offer and uh, last traded volume down here. All right, so we're still looking at Apple. It's still that same feed that we just looked at in the previous slide. Okay, and here it is again. Uh, but now let's start to understand the context of the microstructure. And we're going to start to put these pieces together. Okay, so looking at it, well, we're, we, we know we're in a downtrend. Okay, uh, we can see it in, in the microstructure. Well, why are we? Well, we have high liquidity up here, uh, almost 32,000 uh, shares up here at, at 186.50. Note the, the round number as well. You're going to see this again and again in the, in the equities especially, more than, uh, than any other market. Uh, and then um, uh, you can also see that, uh, well, uh, a lot of liquidity here. What was the reaction, the buyers? Well, they, they shied away from it. We found sellers instead. Okay. Note the uh, uh, the order flow here, or the transactions, uh, is uh, there's more selling to the downside here. Okay. You see you see the uh, buyers start to come in a little bit into high liquidity up here. They don't take them on. Okay. It exhausts out, and we find more sellers down here, and the sellers do take this liquidity on here. Okay. And especially higher liquidity that that is even more aggressive than up here at 186.50. They lowered the offer uh, down to uh, five cents uh, to 145 and and also 146. And we didn't find buyers. We found more sellers. Okay. So we're putting the, this context together of lots of supply up here and getting pretty aggressive. Buyers shying away, finding sellers, driving it lower into lower lows. Okay, and this is just the market microstructure uh, that we're looking at. And this is a benefit because we're looking at current market in the depth of, in the in the dome here, and being able to understand now context of that current and recently past market. Okay, but the, the beauty here is, uh, and, and note this area down here at 186.26 or 125, um, 186.25, okay? This is the same chart. Okay, just a little bit later in time, uh, looking at Apple, we're able to use the dome on a macro view now because we've recorded and transposed all of this liquidity uh, and uh, it, we can see it historically. So all that was was a pullback uh, down to uh, well this level right around here, pushing the market down just a little bit with very high liquidity okay, to try to reach maybe some of these other areas in, in the bigger trend. The bigger trend is obviously... Uh, uh, up at the moment here, okay, coming back up to the open, and look at all the high liquidity up here around uh, 186. Uh, well, we saw it at 186.50, uh, but then uh, 60 and uh, and 70 up in these areas as well. Okay, very very high liquidity. Okay, and uh, now we're starting to find some buyers. Looks like they started to pull some of this uh, liquidity here, starting to find the buyers starting to approach these areas. Okay, and this is all uh, dome information that we're able to extrapolate and uh, 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 place onto that historical chart. All right, here's another uh, macro view. Uh, we're looking at Disney here. And um, I'm gonna go through some of these examples pretty quickly. Uh, so uh, let me know if you have any questions because I do wanna get to the live market analysis uh, and um, uh, show you uh, uh, what's going on in that live market. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Uh, well. Obviously, high liquidity up here, 102 in Disney. Obviously, high liquidity down here at 101. Okay, but look at the reaction down here. Okay, the sellers took them on. They traded right into this area at 101. We see the large transaction, uh, and they traded through this area. Okay, so there's more selling pressure to trade through that area. But down here, look at this little uh, uh, low uh, that's made down here, and we don't find many sellers. All right, well, the market starts to rotate back up into some of these areas here. And uh, well, those buyers step right back in. Okay, they're still here at 101, uh, ready to absorb more. 
And in fact, they did. They, get, they got tested here. We know the larger players are down here. They're at 101. There's no question about it. It's, it's just really objective. Uh, it, it trades through a little bit, okay? But we start to find buyers. And buyers come in and they start to lift the offer. We start to see clusters of buying starting to uh, go to higher highs here, okay? And then up here, we, we break the high, we break the swing, and we find more buyers as they swept the book higher. Okay, they took all of the liquidity off of the best offer for several price levels. That's a, that's a book sweep. 101, they still jump in. They're still interested in getting in line and trading down here. Uh, but look at the, the volume start to pick up, especially up in this, this area here at 101.50. Buyers are, are clearly in control. Okay. Well, where are we going with this? Originally, I would say you're coming up and you're going to test into this high liquidity up here at 101.50. Well, it, they, they pulled, uh, and uh, uh, we kind of went sideways for a bit, but we found more buyers. We're coming up to 102, all right? And, and we did, uh, uh, but uh, I just wanted to show this example uh, between the um, uh, buyers uh, and, the, uh, and the sellers and the aggressors as well, okay? And this is a reversal in that order flow, okay? If you uh, want to look a little closer at it, well, here's your shoulder, head, and shoulder. Now, we've been looking at those patterns for years, but this is why these patterns exist. It's all here in the order flow. It's all this relationship between the larger players uh, providing liquidity, their transactions, uh, and then the follow through uh, of those transactions and liquidity. Okay, so uh, start to see things a lot differently when we start to understand the complete picture of the order flow. All right, here's an example um, with uh, volume profile. And uh, we see this all the time uh, in the markets. And we can see that uh, uh, buyers are, we're looking at uh, Tesla. Uh, buyers are uh, lifting the offer. There's a bit more buying activity than there is selling, especially here. We see the, uh, the lift uh, and this book sweep uh, up into these higher areas of liquidity at uh, 30305 uh, and uh, up here at 30350. And then we kind of go sideways here for a bit. Well, looking at the volume profile, this CVP uh, um, column over here, well, this is your low volume node here in this area around the, this 302.50. Uh, well, if you're a volume profile trader, you'd be looking for a pullback to that, okay? Because you're only looking at traded volume. Cluster of volume down here, obviously, the quick book sweep to the upside, obviously, you're gonna be your low volume node. Uh, and then volume kind of, uh, accumulates sideways here, another volume profile. But the story is not about the volume profile. The story is about the book, okay, the uh, uh, the depth of market. Well, here they are uh, at this um, uh, 303, like 08 maybe, or, or 7, somewhere around there. Very, very high liquidity, okay? They're pressing, they're lifting that, or raising their bids to higher area. Well, it's not going to make it. To your low volume node because the story is here there's more buyers here this is this is the story that's going on you wouldn't see this if you weren't looking at the depth of market okay and uh, very very clearly you can see that uh, uh, the larger player comes in at a very specific time uh, and um, what was the result well we got our push up into the higher liquidity and the target was up here at 304.30 okay all right uh, we're going to go over this example a little bit later as well because you're going to be able to see the um, uh, there's a, a little bit of uh, uh, potential uh, uh, spoofing in some of these areas uh, on the bid, okay? Because uh, ultimately we did we did trade down to that low volume node here, but the story un unfolded. Oops, the story unfolded here though, okay? So at this point we're looking for this target. All right, let's move on and uh, get into. Uh, just some basics again, uh, support and resistance, but understanding the context of liquidity uh, and a trend here as well. Right? Well, look at the layering in of the larger players. Uh, looking at Facebook here, here's our, our 930 open down here. As you can see, the volume obviously picks up. But uh, right away, uh, we can see uh, due to this um, uh, complete depth of market, uh, this is all live. This whole chart is live. Okay. Well, look where they started to layer in. 
Okay, larger players here at 180, 181, 182, and 183. Okay, all at the big figures, all big players. And they were here already waiting in line uh, at the market open. They already placed their orders. Okay, so they're going to be first in line. Uh, no, no question about it. Uh, and, um, well, the, tra the, the buyers took them on here. Uh, traded right into uh, 180, filled that area. We do, it was all absorbed. Uh, we we uh, uh, have a pullback here. We come back up and they're, they're not here any longer. So where are we going? Well, we're coming up here to uh, to 181, okay? Kind of shy away for a bit, but uh, come right back up and, uh, and trade through this area, okay? Now look at the other side though, not on the offer here, look on the bid. Well, see, see how there, this, this area here that was resistance and absorbed starts, we start to see um, some buyers step in on the other side. Okay, so um, uh, they're, they're starting to um, uh, get interested where these areas that were resistance are turning into support. Okay, and we can see the buying support. Same happens here as we trade through the 181. See how they came in here on the bid side? Uh, they wanna be buyers now instead of sellers. Okay, and uh, and you'll see that many times uh, over and over again. So uh, you know some some really beautiful uh, uh, patterns that start to uh, uh, show up here. 179 obviously was down here on the bid, uh, 80, uh, 81, and then uh, you know looking for this ultimately uh, in this uptrend here, looking for the target at 183, and it was reached. All right, here's again Facebook. Uh, here's that 183 level. Uh, and um, let's talk a little bit about absorption. All right now, what is absorption? Well, it's just when uh, uh, it's just like a sponge or, or uh, uh, you know, some, some sort of, um, uh, uh, you know, paper towel or something where uh, it absorbs all of the uh, moisture, for example. Well, in this case, it's absorbing all of the, uh, all of the selling or buying pressure, right? We had 52,000 shares up here, okay? And here are the buyers. Uh, they step right into that area, okay? And we see the big transactions here uh, that take place, but uh, they absorbed all of it. In fact, you can see they didn't even trade up through. Uh, there's still more liquidity up here at this level, okay? And they, they were not able to trade it above it, okay? And there's just, there's more sellers up here. Well, it all of this buying pressure is absorbed, okay? Well, where are we going to find more buyers? Well, we need to find more buyers to get through this level in this area here at 183. Okay, you can see 52,000 shares. Look what traded here. Okay, almost 51,000. So it almost absorbed all of it. Okay, but uh, it didn't. We need to find buyers. Well, where are we going to find the buyers? Look for uh, the buyers here in the book uh, down at this uh, 182.60, and then also this uh, go to that half figure at 182.50 down here. Okay. And uh, start, start to find the buyers down there. And that's exactly where it goes to, like, like a magnet. Okay. There's another great example in Apple the other day. Uh, traded up here into, uh, you know, 327,000 shares. Uh, completely absorbed. Lots of buying pressure. Completely absorbed. Uh, they're not able to trade through it. There's, there's, they still provide very high liquidity up here. We've got to rotate lower. Uh, and it does, and it and it comes down to an area here where we don't see the uh, liquidity in the book. It's pretty dark, uh, but uh, looking for a retest back into where they started to initiate that move on the buy side, and it would be right down in this area here. And again, what uh, what traded here? Uh, well, uh, you can see only 112 con um, thousand contracts traded, so basically just a third of the uh, liquidity that was up here uh, traded. So there's quite a bit more up here. All right, now the opposite of that, uh, absorption. Let's talk about exhaustion and, and areas of exhaustion here. Where are the majority um, of the um, uh, transactions and liquidity? Well, that we, we've been going over that here and we can see them on the, uh, on the offer. Uh, the opposite of that would be the, on the pullbacks here. And uh, look at the transactions that occur in some of these areas down here. Very, very few. There's there's just basically, there's no trading down here. The best bid comes down here and nothing trades. This is exhaustion. This is what occurs when uh, 
when there's no interest in the market, it exhausts out. Okay, so what happens uh, at these points here? Uh, we need to rotate back up to find liquidity in buyers and sellers. And uh, where are they? Well, the majority of them are up in some of these areas. And that's exactly where we go back to. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, it's very indicative of a trending market. You see higher areas of liquidity here, for example, on an uptrend. Uh, uh, the market, uh, uh, the aggressor trades up into those areas. Uh, on the, uh, We're making higher highs. And then on the pullbacks, you're making... Uh, higher lows, <coughs> but there's no trading. Uh, so therefore, we have to rotate back up into the uh, uh, higher volume nodes and, and where the liquidity is. All right, this is an interesting example here of just looking at, at, uh, uh, at some algorithmic activity. And um, uh, we're looking at uh, Amazon here. And uh, in specific, we're looking at a uh, an ignition algo here uh, that's pushing price through the 1600 level. Okay? And this is what it looks like. And this is what it would be impossible or very difficult to track in your depth of market, your dome. Okay? And since Bookmap records all of this activity, it sticks out like a sore thumb. This is an ignition algo. And this is what it looks like. And this is what it's doing. It's providing high liquidity down here at one uh, or uh, at 1598.10. Okay, it pulls, adds higher liquidity, uh, a bit higher here around uh, 98, 20, and then 30, 40, and then uh, 50 and 60. Okay, very quickly, it's pulling and adding up to higher levels, and we we, we can see it, we can record it. Uh, here it is, uh, and what is this algo's um, game here? Well, in this case, uh, it looks like it's trying to ignite orders, buyers to the upside. Uh, and press it through this key figure of 1600 even here in Amazon. Okay, and uh, mission mission accomplished. I mean, uh, you can see that uh, there's very few sellers in these areas here. Nothing but uh, aggressive buying here, uh, and uh, and then they come up into the 1600, and these guys get uh, they they pull. Okay, they don't want to trade here. Well, where are we going to go? We got to go up higher to find higher liquidity, and uh, that's exactly what it does here. Okay, so this is uh, trying to ignite buyers to trade up above into these areas here. And that's uh, the goal of uh, uh, ignition algo. Okay, now this is a deceptive practice um, and it is forbidden, uh, but still uh, you can see uh, what, what's going on here uh, by looking at the uh, uh, historical limit order book in Bookmap. All right, skew of the book. Here's another example uh, looking at uh, JP Morgan in, in this instance. Well, high liquidity up here around uh, 114.50, you know, 29,000 shares, but then look how aggressive they got here in the skew. Okay, very high liquidity. We know that there's got to be uh, very high probability it's the same actor. High liquidity that, that pops into the book around this uh, 114.46, and then at the moment that they pull it, they add it lower, being very aggressive here. Okay, uh, again, pull, add lower, pull and add lower. And, uh, and look at what it does to the, uh, uh, the price and the traders. Okay, the buyers start to shy away from it. A lot of supply showing here. Uh, the buyers aren't interested and we start to rotate lower, okay? Which was an uptrend, okay? But uh, you can see the effect that it had here. Okay, now this is called a skew of the book. Uh, and uh, you need to think of this example here uh, as you would uh, an auction, okay? Larger players coming in uh, into an auction with a lot of supply, okay? Uh, and um, uh, if there's a lot of supply uh, and we don't have enough buyers to uh, uh, be interested in that supply, we're gonna rotate lower. All right, and that would be very difficult to see uh, with if you're just looking at uh, transactions and traded volume, it just wouldn't be there. Okay, the um, uh, the spoof and skew. This is that example in Tesla that I showed earlier. I just wanted to cover it again. The story, uh, remember, was this area here at this uh, 30310, high liquidity here, not looking for a pullback to the uh, low volume node yet. Okay, they skew the book. They they even show higher here and higher here to reach their target, which is up here at this um, uh, 30430 uh, area. Uh, once they get up here, they start pulling, okay? 
uh, objective done, this can come back and try to exhaust out into that low volume node and then rotate back higher up into some of these areas again. All right, now I'm gonna wrap up here pretty quickly. I, I do wanna go over um, uh, this one example looking at um, uh, liquidity uh, in regards to the news uh, and geopolitical uh, economic events. All right, so uh, this was um, uh, waiting for, um, well, it, it happened, uh, you know, kind of out of the blue. We don't know when these events are going to happen, but the market here is telling us, and we're getting this information free, basically, in Bookmap. Look how they're pulling liquidity across the board here, all levels, okay? Uh, and uh, this is around um, uh, just before uh, 2.45 Eastern time. Uh, we see big transactions that takes place here probably at the news event. This was um, uh, 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 um, uh, tariff, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, tariff protection uh, that was uh, announced by Trump against China. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, it was a speech uh, and, um, or maybe it was a tweet. And uh, we can see immediately uh, everyone starts to pull, but we're getting insight here. Uh, and we're getting insight for free of a valuation that, you know, larger players spend millions of dollars uh, trying to understand a valuation of a specific instrument. In this case with Tesla, where would they still be willing uh, to be sellers? And here's your answer. This is what it's worth it is up here. Okay. And that's exactly where we go to. Uh, actually, someone uh, even front ran it a little bit here. You can see around this uh, uh, 318.50 area but it comes up into a uh, uh, 320 uh, and, and 10 cents and that's where it trades. Okay. So they stayed in the book and we're getting that insight here. All right now, this is a very curious example because look at uh, the very, very strong uh, auction here in the transactions. Okay. Nothing but buying, pulling this almost like a, at an exponential rate. Okay. Due to the news uh, and uh, a traders, a little bit of uh, you know, uh, anxiety, a little bit of back and forth here, but the traders put it together and start to understand, okay, tariff protections, this is bullish for Tesla, okay? This is a U.S. company, uh, and uh, they're getting protected, uh, looking for uh, this to be evaluated higher, okay, into where someone else is going to take the other side of that trade, all right? So now let's compare that same example, okay, at the same time here with Apple. Why is Apple going down? Is it a U.S. company? Well, technically it's not, it, it's an Irish company, I believe. Uh, but um, uh, there's relationships uh, with trade in China for components and for assembly. So the, a completely different reaction here. Well, tariff protection is not really gonna help them that much, in, then is it? Okay, so actually uh, uh, it's gonna be worth less. Uh, and we see the traders uh, uh, start to jump in here and uh, uh, trade to the downside that this, is, this news is gonna hurt Apple. Okay, due to the globalization. So we're getting um, you know, two different insights uh, from the same economic news, uh, but putting the pieces together uh, and understanding the evaluation of these instruments. Where, where are the uh, traders willing to buy it? 174, no question about it. Okay, here they are. Okay, look at the trade through here, uh, this 175, and then sellers, if, we, if they're, they're looking for a pullback here to 175, they're interested. Uh, they'll be uh, they'll be happy to provide liquidity up here, you know, 54,000 contracts up here. Okay. Now, something interesting about this, due to globalization, and just putting these pieces together. If you're a fundamental trader, well, you know, you can use this to your advantage. Okay, uh, a lot of fundamental uh, stock traders out there, uh, but start to understand valuations of these instruments uh, when these news events occur, and you're getting it for free. Okay. Well, look at the sell-off here compared to the um, the uh, the rally uh, in Tesla. I mean, Tesla is not not um, uh, reliant uh, on a, a lot of uh, components coming from China, and we can see it clearly uh, in the price action and the traders' uh, activity. Well, you know, here uh, we can see that uh, ah, you know they're not so not so sure uh, on that sell side. Okay, it is going lower, no no question. Uh, but uh, it's not at the same exponential rate that Tesla was going up. 
Okay, so we can see and start to understand and extrapolate meaning from this that, well, you know, maybe uh, maybe it would be a, a, a good opportunity to buy at some of these lower levels then. Uh, and um, uh, maybe it won't hurt Apple as much as the initial reaction uh, traders had. Anyway, just extrapolating some of that uh, economic uh, and geopolitical events uh, into the specifics of the company and then being able to see it here all displayed uh, in the order book. All right, uh, take a look at Amazon. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I wanna take this same uh, example here of the news uh, but then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to um, uh, make uh, uh, an analogy uh, with the opening of the market. OK, so this is um, the market open in Amazon. And this is no different than that geopolitical event. OK, because we're looking at pre-market data here and we already know what larger players think this is valued for for the day. And they've spent millions of dollars on their analysis. Uh, to be able to, uh, uh, you know, start to provide liquidity with high confidence at some of these levels. So this is all pre-market. They're already lined up in the market with their orders ready to go. They're up here at 5, uh, 1580 uh, on the offer. They're down here at 1545 on the bid. Uh, this is all pre-market. And then here is our 930 open right here with this vertical yellow line. Okay, well, you can see that the buyers stepped in already and are trading up in the pre-market. Okay, looking for maybe a slight pullback into where they initiated down here, looking for this 1570 to trade, and I would be targeting 1580. Okay, just based on what we already know and see in the marketplace. Okay, and uh, here's here's the ac action uh, after the 930 open. Well, uh, we did we did get a pullback here, uh, and. Um, uh, then uh, uh, we see the, the, the buyers did initiate uh, again down in these areas here. You can see them start to initiate here, pulling it higher uh, and target the uh, the 1580. Okay, these larger players usually get what they want uh, because they're the one that's, that they're holding all the liquidity. But the market needs that to trade. All right. Okay, a few examples from some bookmap traders. Uh, some interesting examples here. Uh, using, uh, in this case, uh, some correlated markets, looking at SPY, this trader. Uh, he's looking at his candlestick chart here. He, uh, he sees that the uh, the market uh, SPY starts to go down a bit. Okay, well, he's, he jumps over to bookmap, and he's looking at the VIX. He's, he's making the correlation here with the VIX, the volatility index. And he sees that, uh, well, that's going down too. Well, something's wrong here then. I mean, light, nice big wall of liquidity here on the offer in the VIX. Uh, but vo volatility is going down, okay? Well, it, price should be going up if volatility is going down. And we can see that actually price is going down. So he sees that uh, uh, misaligned uh, correlation, uh, and then um, he jumps in, okay? And he, he's actually jumping in and um, into the um, uh, options uh, market here. Uh, so you can see here at 2.55 p.m., okay, he, uh, he trades. Uh, he buys uh, one uh, uh, S&P E-mini, option at 1325 okay then he notes that uh, price starts to climb back up back to the top of the range here or even close back up to the swing here okay jumps over and looks at his um, uh, volatility index again uh, and he sees that the uh, price is going down okay so uh, he, he's looking to cover then uh, is starting to get into some areas of higher liquidity as you can start to see in the current book down here uh, at the low uh, and um, yeah, it, it looks like the uh, the correlations all matched up pretty nicely now, uh, and uh, decides to cover, okay, at the top of the range in that S and P. So six minute trade, um, and uh, uh, sells it, uh, and uh, and captures a, a dollar seventy five, okay, so one hundred seventy five bucks in six minutes. A okay, very simple example, of simple trade, and just one option. All right, here's another example of a trader uh, looking at VTVT Pharmaceutical. Uh, and uh, we're looking at, uh, he, well, he was eyeballing this 150 figure here. We're looking at some penny stocks now. Uh, and um, uh, we see the uh, strong auction up through the 150 area, okay? And uh, starting to bounce up above in that area here. But uh, look at the book. Uh, it, just some really uh, great uh, insight here in the book, uh, you know, that support, or resistance becoming support idea, well, here they are, okay? And they're absorbing, 
uh, you know, we can see, you know, 29,000 shares here, and then up above, they're even getting more aggressive in these areas here. Uh, we see uh, 26, 27,000. Okay, even more here, you know, 28 or or 29 maybe. Uh, so uh, uh, getting very aggressive in that book. Uh, he also knows this little spike here in some of the volume right in this little area here on the buy side. Uh, he's looking to get in, uh, looking for a pullback into that high liquidity, looking to carry it up higher, uh, up into uh, at, at least uh, some of the higher highs here, uh, and then areas of other high liquidity. And actually, this uh, actually shot up for uh, quite a few days afterwards. Uh, this was a big a big pivot uh, in the market for uh, uh, for this instrument. Okay. All right, so we've gone through now uh, all sorts of examples here, uh, looking at full depth of market, being able to understand uh, all of the uh, market players providing liquidity, uh, and um, uh, starting to get some examples here uh, uh, that um, uh, that show that advantage uh, that we're receiving uh, with this full depth uh, visualization. Okay, so being able to read that mark micro and macro structure. Uh, being able to read the algorithmic behavior and clearly seeing the larger players layer in uh, to these markets really works well uh, with DX feed book map for the U.S. equities. Okay, uh, we looked at a few examples of some traders. Uh, let's jump into the uh, live market analysis and then uh, let's uh, field some questions. Okay. All right. Well, how do I get out of this? Hold on just a minute. There we go. Okay. Yes, uh, this, this webinar is recorded, so it will be available to you guys. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, well, let's see what's going on here. We're looking at Twitter. Um, all right, and Twitter coming down into, uh, here's the, you know, the market uh, open. Uh, you can see the, uh, the little bit of the pre-market and the volume really picks up here. Well, this looks just like some of the other examples. Uh, higher liquidity is up here. Lower, you know, on the bid, the liquidity is down here. It trades into these guys down here. We see it rotate back up. Uh, where does it trade to? The other side of the of the range here uh, that you can see right into high liquidity. Where is it at, at 33? Um, you know, just just like just like some of the other examples. Uh, uh, we uh, big, big sideways uh, kind of you know uh, slow kind of grind back down to where again the low liquidity that's down here. I'm sorry, the high liquidity that's down here at this uh, lower uh, 3250 area. Okay, looks like they traded and they're still still back in here with high liquidity. Okay, so uh, uh, we're coming up around uh, you know almost uh, two o'clock here. So uh, we'll, let's say, we'll we'll see if this is going to accept down below or not. Else, I'd be targeting this area right up here at uh, at 3275, very high liquidity up here. Okay, so um, anyway, that's a quick uh, look at here at uh, at Twitter. Let's take a look at Apple uh, and jump back. Uh, nice trade through here uh, in Apple uh, around uh, just before uh, 12:45, as you can see, very er high areas of liquidity here. Now, this is an example of a flip, right? Here they are. Uh, with very high liquidity, and they trade through them, no question about it. Look at the transactions that take place, uh, and um, uh, and and uh, still see uh, this uh, brought down to lower levels, uh, and uh, uh, then they jump on on the other side here. Okay, a little bit higher, not equal. Okay, not not at the same areas where they um, were uh, uh, providing uh, a high liquidity on the bid. Okay, the the offer is a little bit higher here around the 77 level, as you can see about 10,000 contracts, uh, but um, uh, still uh, showing some, uh, some some bearishness here. Here comes the move and the sweep down into, uh, looks like 187, the figure here, okay? All right, so uh, trending lowered, no, no question about it here in Apple. Uh, looking for this to trade uh, down into this 187 figure uh, and uh, looking looking pretty good uh, for that, that area to get tested right now. Okay, look at them also uh, on the offer. See the high liquidity here? Okay, this is a better example. This is a reading a little more of the micro structures, really not that micro, but look at the flip. Here they were on the uh, uh, on the bid, flip now to the, to the opposite side. Now this is even more aggressive than what we looked at up here at 77. Okay, they're at the same price level, right? So uh, 
someone's saying here, larger players are, are telling us that uh, the valuation of this instrument now uh, is going to be down into, into a new trading range and new level below this 187.25 area. Okay, and uh, looking for it to test into uh, 187 even. All right, same thing over here on a macro view, as you can see. Okay, trading through this area, what was uh, a support now is basically resistance. We don't even trade back up above it, as you can see. We only trade up to this big volume cluster here, which is going to be a high volume node, um, and uh, or at least it is here, I should say. It's actually going to be a low volume node in the in the bigger picture of, of things, as you can see here. Um, but um, uh, back to this uh, uh, little cluster of high volume is what I should say. Uh, that's as far as it goes on the buy side. We we'll rotate lower. Sellers are in control. Okay, Start to note clusters of selling at lower lows, uh, targeting higher liquidity down here uh, on the uh, on the bid. All right. Well, anyway, I've um, kind of extended my time here and gone too long. Uh, we can look at many more. If you guys have questions, uh, let me know. Uh, else I want to get to some of your questions uh, and answers here uh, and uh, let's take a look all right so yeah ah I uh, wanted to end up here with um, our uh, example in Apple now this is what we led uh, off the um, uh, the webinar with this example here and in Apple and uh, I promise to come back here and uh, analyze this and start to understand uh, all the bits and pieces and put it together, okay? All right, and let's uh, let's do exactly that. All right, so here's our, our um, 9.30 open uh, right, around, uh, right around this area here. And uh, where's the liquidity at that time? Well, they're up here at 176.50. They're down here on the bid at 175, okay? And um, uh, we, we uh, rotate lower, uh, test down below here, the swing, uh, rotate back up. When we start to find buyers and we're trading back up into the range, I'm looking for the other side of the range and I'm looking for this high liquidity to trade here at 176.50. Well, it doesn't, right? What happened? The, they, they came in here and got aggressive uh, on, the, uh, on the offer and they lowered it with very high liquidity just at the top of this range. The buyers don't trade through them. Uh, and we, uh, uh, they're starting to uh, uh, shy away from those areas. We start to find some sellers, hit the bid, uh, looking then for this liquidity down here to trade. And it comes right down to it like a magnet, okay? Uh, trades down here, uh, rotate back up, uh, and uh, we see, again, more aggressive selling seems to be the trend. Uh, they're, they're lowering the offer here. They lower it again here and here. Uh, and then this was that fundamental uh, news or that geopolitical news that came back into uh, the market at this time, right? This was that uh, uh, China, Chinese uh, uh, tariff uh, protection uh, uh, that was announced by, by Trump um, or U.S. protection, I should say, against China. Uh, and uh, it looks like, in, in fact, uh, we can maybe even allude to that. Maybe someone knew a little something here uh, because we see this high liquidity on the offer. Uh, anyway, it makes me a little uh, suspicious um, but uh, we see the follow through on that, uh, our flip again uh, that we just even saw in the, in the live market from 175 on the bid is obviously now on the offer, looking for the lower areas here to trade and uh, comes right down to it. Also very curious uh, on this one, on this uh, uh, Apple example, we noted how, well, traders weren't, they were not as sure as they were with Tesla uh, to the upside as with Apple to the downside here. And uh, this is after the market closed and look at them layer in here. So very, very curious example uh, to, uh, you know, uh, uh, some uh, buyers, uh, larger players layering in at, uh, at, at uh, 173.70, 80 and 90, okay? With very high liquidity uh, after the market, okay? So they're looking to scoop it up down here, all right? Uh, so that's, uh, uh, we can get to the uh, questions and answers now, uh, and um, uh, let me know. It's, I see a few already in here, so let me start to get to it. Oh, thank you, uh, uh, Caldun. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can get the uh, point of control uh, indicator. It it uh, it comes with Bookmap. Okay, so uh, no no problem there. 
Uh, can I explain a little bit about the CVD and the POS, and if possible, some examples? Yeah, well, the CVD, um, you know, looking at the cumulative volume delta, uh, let's go back here, take a look at book map. Um, I uh, closed it up for, um, all right, well, here, here was our target, right, at 187. Obviously, we traded through that, uh, but that was the uh, the target here uh, for, for Apple, and um, uh, if they continue to come in and, and uh, you know, hit the bid hard, we're looking at 186.50 uh, uh, down here as the next level, okay? Anyway, uh, yeah, we'll see if any, any sort of like shenanigans start to pull up here. But it's still looking pretty bearish here because we see high liquidity. They're jumping in. See these guys jumping in higher here, okay? No, it's it, they're, the, the, the sellers are taking them on. Right, so if the sellers are taking them on here and trading through these areas, they have a lot of selling pressure. So still, you know, targeting uh, targeting 186.50, that's what I'd be looking for. Okay, based on what I see in the transactions, compared to what we see in the book. Okay, putting those two pieces together uh, and reading it. Uh, CVD. Well, I turned it off on purpose, uh, Jose, uh, because. Um, uh, I don't want to uh, make it too complex and understand uh, all the different um, uh, uh, indicators or uh, add-ons that we have. We, and we do have many that uh, uh, offer more uh, 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 understanding, uh, correlations, uh, and confluence at some of these areas in reading the order flow. Okay. Uh, anyway, the um, uh, cumulative volume delta, very, very simple indicator. Um, and uh, not to get complex because we don't need to, uh, is uh, all it does is take the aggressor. Uh, if it's a, an aggressive market buy for 100 shares, your CVD lead or uh, read uh, is 100, okay? Now, let's say um, uh, the next transaction that takes place is someone sells for 200 shares. Well, that's gonna be a negative number uh, and it's added to that first number and the overall uh, uh, read then is negative 100 at that point for your CVD, and that's how it works, okay? So it's just reading the um, the aggressor. Okay, and you can see the aggressors, who's clearly in control here, right? Uh, we know it's the seller. Uh, let's see here. Is it possible to go over delta ratio uh, of aggressor buyer? Um, yeah, um, Caldron, maybe, maybe, um, maybe ask this, uh, uh, in the webinar tomorrow, uh, if you like, uh, and I can go over the CVD in a little more, um, it might be a more proper time to go over that. Okay. If you, if you don't mind. All right, guys, we're just hovering above and look at them starting to come into the book now. Uh, look at the buy interest. Okay. This was our target was, uh, 186.50. Okay, coming right to it here, okay, just like a magnet. Uh, and uh, But look at them starting to front run in here. So we're starting to find some buying interest, right? Okay, they're starting to absorb some of that selling pressure as well. Okay, the battle's not over yet. Okay, there they go, okay, uh, into uh, uh, our, our, our target here, uh, 186.50. Um, and uh, yep, starting to trade through a little bit. Let's see if we uh, maybe, um, you know, I haven't looked at any, uh, higher time frame analysis here whatsoever. So, you know, I'm just looking at what I've showed you so far. I haven't been watching Apple all day at all. Um, but, um, uh, you know, starting to get a little little curious now. We've absorbed uh, several times on the way down. Uh, and if we exhaust maybe down here on that sell side, okay, and we start to find some buyers come in, uh, and then we can maybe even see uh, uh, it trade back up into some of these levels where it dropped from. Okay. Uh, Brett, you're looking at SPY and see a nice rip to the downside, okay? Uh, yeah, we can uh, maybe take a look at that if you guys want. Uh, let me jump back, and I want to show you guys, um, uh, as you get your questions in here, um, how to uh, how to get Bookmap uh, DX feed. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, your first your first step here is you're going to need to go to bookmap.com, uh, and what you want to get is the Bookmap 7, and you want to get the Global or the Global Plus. Okay, so uh, Click on at bookmap.com, click on the packages, okay, and then that'll bring you down to the um, uh, global and global plus versions here. Now, you can subscribe yearly or monthly. It's up to you, uh, but um, uh, these are the two versions that you're going to need, 
Okay, if you want to trade from the chart, you're going to have to get the uh, global plus version. And this is what comes with all of the uh, add-on indicators uh, that uh, uh, I, I didn't really talk about too much in this webinar. All right, so anyway, select one of these. And the next step is once you go through the payment process, log back into bookmap.com, okay, and then click on this button over here on the left margin on add-ons. Okay, once you click on add-ons, take you to the third and final step here uh, is uh, you um, subscribe to the uh, package you want for DX feed. Okay, and there's three options available here. One is for NASDAQ total depth, um, which is $69 a month. And you can read it's as NASDAQ uh, uh, total view last uh, and last sale. Uh, and it includes 24 hours of historical depth data. So when you subscribe to Bookmap in the morning, uh, you'll get up to a full day of data already loaded into the chart. All right, so that's one option. You have another option here for EdgeX depth. Okay, that's that's uh, BATS or CBOE. All right, same thing, um, full depth, uh, 24 hours historical, uh, and it's 59 a month. Now we're offering a special right now, uh, and you can get a bundle of both of those together. Okay, the com the combo view. Uh, for $59 a month for the first month. Okay, after that though, it's 119 for each month. Okay, but uh, uh, this is all inclusive here uh, and you get the, uh, the the discount up front. So uh, you might wanna try that one, uh, see uh, uh, you know how uh, how that compares with uh, uh, maybe your, your dome uh, looking at uh, equities uh, and see if you like uh, you know both of them, uh, EdgeX and, and NASDAQ. And then it's up to you after that. You know, choose uh, if you wanna stick with the, the bundle, bundle or if you wanna jump into maybe uh, one or the other here. Okay, all right, any more questions? Any questions about how to get this? Uh, let's see here. Is one better than the other? Um, no, I mean, um, they're, they're both, um, uh, good. They're both strong. Um, you know, you, you're going to, you know, it depends on the instrument. Uh, you know, the stocks is a lot more complex than uh, looking at a consolidated feed um, uh, or consolidated uh, book in the futures market. Okay. The futures market, it, it really is centralized uh, where the um, uh, stocks and there's many uh, uh, data providers or market makers. Okay, or liquidity providers, I should say. Uh, and um, uh, that's why NASDAQ Total View is a combo right away. Uh, so is uh, EdgeX, uh, but uh, uh, the two together, you're, you're just getting more and more data. Okay, so I uh, hope that answers your question, uh, Brett. Uh, let's see, uh, Khaldun, um, how to demo trade on Bookmap longer than two weeks monthly payment is. Yeah, I mean, I would recommend going, um, trying Bookmap. There, there really is no uh, trial, um, uh, so uh, try it for a month uh, at a low price and uh, and see if that uh, uh, is something that uh, works for you. Um, and uh, and then yeah, just subscribe uh, to the to the to the data here, uh, and uh, uh, probably best to go with that uh, consolidated feed that uh, bundle. Uh, for that first month, and uh, you should be pretty pretty well set up to see if this is something that works for you. Okay. All right. Well, let me. I want to uh, jump over and show you something else as well. So, if you do have other questions, we can uh, take a look here. Uh, most of you guys probably came through this page to get into the webinar, um, and uh, you can scroll down here to get more information. There's a small video here as well, a short video. Uh, get through some of the main features, but then the um, uh, the Q and A is down here. If you want to look at some of the you know the costs involved, um, uh, you know, et cetera, how to purchase, um, and um, uh, yeah, any anything here. Basically, these are you know some of the uh, the, the bigger questions uh, that we uh, have answered already for you. Uh, but um, uh, any specific questions is uh, this is your time now. Okay, all right. Well, any questions on the, uh, I just um, I wanted to deliver uh, to you guys like uh, the uh, understanding here 
um, of the advantages that you're getting, okay? So if you have any questions about this, uh, because basically you can subscribe now uh, and you're gonna get it, you're gonna see it, okay? So you, you'll get it immediately. Uh, and uh, let's, let's just jump back and take a look at our Apple example. Okay, we read this in real time, right? And we also started to read that this potential reversal was starting to take place, right? Okay, Be, why? Wh why did I think that, right? Well, we, we saw the absorption on the way down. Okay, we're targeting these areas. They've been in the book a long time. Well, they're gonna absorb a lot of that buying or selling pressure. Okay, we actually came down a little bit further as you can see, but uh, now, now you can see we traded into this area here and now they're starting to bid uh, bid up a little bit in some of these areas, right? They're even back in here at 186.50, okay? Now, I, I don't think it's a very strong reversal whatsoever. Like, uh, I'm not seeing a lot of buyers come in here, lift the offer, sweep that book higher with a lot of buying pressure. Uh, not at all, uh, you know? So we're just getting kind of a pullback and a bounce uh, back to where we broke from over here in this area um, around this... Um, uh, you know, higher liquidity around this uh, 186.75 area, okay? So uh, maybe we'll see the sellers re-engage here now at, right, right around this point uh, and um, I see them actually hit the bid down into this uh, 186.40, right? That's uh, kind, of what, kind of what I'm looking for leaning to at, at this point, okay? But uh, uh, yeah, we saw the easy moves take place. Uh, just, uh, you know, they, they really broadcasted their, uh, uh, their targets to us. Uh, now, now we're seeing a little bit of back and forth here. Okay. But, um, uh, anyway, let's see more questions. Uh, if you buy the combo, what's the difference? Uh, will it give different levels than like NASDAQ? No, I mean, you're, you're getting it from NASDAQ total view, which is a combo. Uh, but, uh, uh if you get the combo, uh, with, with um, Edge X, uh, you're getting NASDAQ total view, last sale, and Edge X all together. Okay, so more data, more, more information uh, to draw knowledge from. All right. Okay, let's see. What is this, CVP and SVP? Yeah, sure. Uh, very, very easy, very straightforward. Um, CVP stands for chart range volume profile. Uh, SVP stands for session range volume profile. So uh, the session range, this is all of the volume that I have here uh, that has been um, recorded at specific price levels for the entire session I've had my book map open. Okay, chart range volume profile is only the volume that I see within my viewable chart range here. Okay, so I'm going to zoom into this little area right here. Okay, and now you can see my chart range volume profile reflects the data that's only within uh, my chart range, okay, of the of the transactions that have taken place. Okay, only that. All right, looks like they're going to hit the bid here. Uh, looking for, um, yeah, this one, uh, well, no, they're going to shy away here. Okay. Never mind. Right back into the range here. Yeah, let's take a look at SPY. You know, SPY is an interesting one. Uh, Brett, um, it, wow, it did it did sell off uh, pretty nicely here. Um, it's an interesting one. Now, look at the map. I mean, look at the liquidity map. It looks a lot different, right? Uh, you don't see like these really big areas uh, and targeted uh, areas here uh, in the book. I mean, if I zoom vertically, you'll see them at some of the you know higher price ranges, as you can see at 273 and 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 273.50. Okay, but uh, what, why? What, what's going on here? <laughs> well, this this instrument is heavily hedged. Okay, that's why. Okay, this is why it looks so different. Okay, because uh, you know uh, they're offsetting uh, some positions uh, with uh, and providing high liquidity at, at, at areas very very close to uh, current price. Okay, if you if you went and looked at um, the uh, the bonds for example, uh, it would look a lot like this as well. Okay, or if you looked at um, uh, let's say during rollover uh, in the futures markets. Okay, now you don't have to worry about rollover in uh, in stocks, but uh, what they're doing is they're 
uh, rolling out of one contract month into the next. Okay, and you'll see this kind of behavior here in the book. Right, so different markets, uh, you know, different uh, 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 book and different behavior. Okay, so um, uh, anyway, uh, still uh, lots can be gained uh, from this area uh, in, in the book or in this view. Uh, you know, like look at them. Uh, I mean, it's battling it here, but uh, looks like the um, we found a lot of sellers uh, up in these areas uh, in the book. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's take a look here at maybe the book skew. Yeah, I mean, they're still pressing down here on that uh, on that sell side. Uh, how do you add a, um, a, a CVP? Okay, that's easy. Just uh, right-click here, uh, insert a column, okay, and then right-click and, and then uh, change it to uh, volume, okay, and then chart range. Okay, select chart range here as well as volume. Wow, nice, Brett. Okay. So uh, <laughs> you just pulled 60%. Uh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, no. I mean, I, I know a lot of a lot of traders that uh, they 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 look at the uh, SPY and um, you know they're so accustomed to it they understand it. Like you know, look at the, the you know the buy side now is starting to show pretty pretty strong, right? So they're supporting it here on that buy side. Okay. Are we finding sellers? Well. Maybe if yeah, we're we're finding a few like uh, you know back and forth here. Okay. Anyway, here's here's where the buyers really stepped in on the auction here, and they are still supporting it above at this uh, seventy-one fifty level or so. All right. So if we can get a few more buyers to step in uh, up at these areas here, uh, then then we might be able to uh, uh, lift that offer up into a higher area. Okay, I mean, this is pretty steep pullback, right? So maybe it's not justified. Uh, we may see a, a, a pullback uh, to uh, this area here, which is around this uh, uh, 71, 90 or, or so, let's say. All right, let's jump back to our Apple and see what's happening here. Not too much, not too much. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was was kind of convoluted at this point here. We now now we're getting a lot more insight. Uh, we see that uh, one uh, eighty six fifty showing quite a bit more, uh, and uh, here they are up up on the uh, on the offer at uh, one eighty six eighty. I don't know three or four or something like that. Okay, just kind of channeling right now between these two areas of high liquidity. All right, guys. Well, if there's no more questions, uh, then let's uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, and uh, hope that uh, I've demonstrated for you uh, uh, this competitive advantage. Just alone, uh, just end here uh, with uh, the advantage of seeing full depth of market is uh, is something I, I think immediately you'll be able to uh, uh, use use uh, to to an advantage. Uh, just being able to understand where that high liquidity is, especially here using equities, uh, because they really stick out, uh, and you can really start to understand. Uh, the targets uh, of where uh, the market can trade. Okay. So anyway, I'll leave you with that. Uh, and um, uh, if you are uh, uh, interested uh, in, um, in purchasing and uh, you want to go through this, uh, you can always reach out to us uh, at support at bookmap.com or uh, feel free to reach me uh, as well at bruce at bookmap.com and, uh, and happy to help you out here. Okay. Oh, thanks. Thanks, guys. I, I really appreciate the comments. Re really nice comments here. Um, uh, really good to hear. Uh, just, uh, uh, yeah, you know, think that this is uh, uh, quite, quite an amazing thing to be able to see uh, and uh, uh, use to your advantage uh, and, and profit from it. Okay. All right, guys. Have a good day, and we'll catch up with you next time. Take care.